Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cocoon. So whether you are just starting your journey with us or you've been following us for some time, we want you to know of a new resource that we have posted on our website for you. So this is called the Birth Bundle, and this is a compilation of resources and links and recipes and checklists and anything and everything relating to your first, second, third, and fourth trimester, so when you, after you've had baby. Make sure to check it out under media on our website at cocoonyoga.com. Hello everybody and welcome. We're gonna start standing today, but if you haven't already got it, make sure you have a rolled up towel or blanket or pillow handy so that you can use it during class. So starting up in a nice tall, mountain pose. You can take your feet a little wider than your hips if that feels good. Maybe a little sway into the hips. Just close your eyes here. We're just gonna breathe. I'd like you to bring your hands to baby. And keep shifting from side to side, kind of like you're rocking baby. Send your breath deep down to the depths of your belly. With hands on baby, maybe give baby a gentle rub. And then I want you to shift your hands below, feeling where your pubic bone is. And as you're shifting back and forth, feeling those little micro movements underneath your hands of your pelvis. So your pelvis is made up of four bones. Here, your pubic bone coming up around. You can bring your hands to the side of your hips, your hip bones. Feel that slight movement and shift as you sway. And bringing your hands around back, feeling the sacrum, that big bone at the base of your spine. Slight movement there as you shift and sway. So these four bones of your pelvis, they shift and move. And with the increased relax and in happening, this hormone, during pregnancy. Leading up to your birth, the relaxin helps to open up these bones and joints, allowing that passage for baby. So bringing your hands back around to baby, comfortably resting the shoulders down if they've crept up. Take two more slow, deep, nourishing breaths. done. Gently opening your eyes. And if your feet aren't all ready, I want you to plie the toes outwards to kind of get this opening up through the hip joint. And then from here, we're going to take the arms and sweep them up over to the left. And as you do this, pivot on the right toe. So lifting up the toe, reach in length, find length up through the right side body. Nice, strong, bright arms. Slowly come back down through center. And we're gonna do the opposite side. So sweeping up over towards the right. Get that left side body stretch in. Encouraging a position, a movement that feels good for you. So if you wanna pause a little longer in each position, no problem. Move in a way that encourages that beautiful goddess, that intuitive voice within you. Good. And when you're done, just balancing yourself out, come back through center. All right, bring your arms out wide like a T, palms to the ground, fingers nice and bright. Lift and lengthen through the top of your head and then take a big inhale. Exhale, drop right ear to right shoulder. Settle the head down. Let it just be heavy, sitting in gravity here. And close your eyes if you want to. Make sure your shoulders haven't crept up, so settle them down away from your, away from your head as much as you can. Nice active fingers, still nice and bright. And then we're gonna slowly shift the head, taking the nose towards the right armpit. 
Still nice active arms. Good, on your next inhale, come back up through center, release your arms down. Inhale, bring arms up overhead, grab a hold of your right wrist and take yourself over towards the left, getting again that nice, beautiful, big side body stretch. Come back up through center, release the arms down. Inhale, bring them right back up to your T, nice active fingers. Lift and lengthen through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, settle the left ear down towards the shoulder. So don't bring the shoulders up. Settle the head as much as you can, releasing any tension through the neck. It might be juicy, I know. Breathe into where you're feeling challenged though. Slowly rotate your head bringing your nose towards that left armpit. And then tune into your next inhale. Sail up back through center, release arms down. Inhale, release, uh, bring your arms back overhead. Grab a hold of the left wrist this time and take yourself over to the right. Check in with the feet, make sure that you're not sitting all the weight into your right foot. They're equally distributed. Slowly return through center and release down. Okay, so find your mountain at the top of your mat with heels stacked under your hips, feet parallel to one another. I'll show you from the side view here. So we're gonna come into this chair pose, but I want you to set yourself up in mountain. So setting up for success here. So activate the legs, activate the glutes, don't tuck the tail under though. Make sure you're blossoming your bum. Set your rib cage up right over top of your pelvis. Set the shoulders nice and high, opening up through the chest. Breathe. <sighs> On your next inhale, I want you to take the arms overhead and then exhale, sit your bum back. Kind of like you're sitting in a chair. You don't have to come too low here, no problem. If you just wanna come a little bit. And if you don't want to have the arms overhead, you just wanna bring the hands to the hips, you can do that as well. Okay, so we are gonna build that challenge, that fire in the foundation. It's swelling, I can feel it swelling for me, coming up in through the legs. See that as a good thing, don't see that as a bad thing. Breathe into the challenge. And if you want to, doing heel raises with me. So raising one heel up, stay low. And then the opposite heel up. Keep going, alternating heels. And lower down. So I like to find little micro movements in all of my postures. It feels good for me. Uh, when you're birthing, you wanna think about moving positions a lot, every 30 minutes if you can change positions even if that next position is lying down on your side and you're still no problem but switch positions this allows that pelvis that shifty pelvis i know that fire is going keep going that shifty pelvis to open up create more space for baby to get into that optimal position for birth so think about positions where the belly is drawn forward helps actually to encourage more space in the pelvis as well Keep going, one more to either side or just balance yourself out. <sighs> Spicy, good. And then come back up through center to your mountain pose. Take a breath, encourage that big abundance. Lovely, all right. So we're gonna work with a little bit of balance here as we come up onto the toe mounds. You do have the option though to keep your feet flat. You don't have to lift them up if you want to. But whenever we're balancing, we wanna find a drishti, so a soft focal point on the ground, and we wanna to connect to the core. So I want you to imagine there's a string attached to your hips and you just cinch that string closed slightly. That helps to contract the core, the transversus abdominis, rather the six pack, okay? So we wanna connect way deep down in here. So when you're ready, Inhale, bring your arms up overhead and slowly lift up onto your tippy toe mounds. Good. Exhale, come back down. Go slow. Inhale, up and overhead. And exhale, come back down. 
This time we're gonna come back down and sit into that chair. Sweep the arms back. Inhale, come up, toe mounds. Woo. Exhale, come down. I have to focus on my drishti too or I'll fall. Keep going. Inhale, open slowly. Cinch the string. Breathe, don't hold your breath. Exhale, lower down, maybe a little deeper. Last one, inhale, open, right up to the sky. And exhale to your chair. All right, take your hands to your hips and come to stand up in your mountain pose. So showing you from the side view here, mountain, take your hands to your hips and take a giant step back with the right foot. So we're gonna angle that back toe forward so that the hips can face forward. Inhale, open your arms up to the sky and exhale, bend into your front knee, stacking it right over top of your front heel. Set your shoulder blades down on your back, settling them down away from your head. Nice active fingers. Keep the breath moving through you. Keep it charged up. And then for the last two cycles, taking your hands to your lower back with the fingers pointing down, open your heart up. So keep the connection between your legs, keep hugging the thigh bones towards one another. That connects to your core. So we're not using the tummy muscles here, coming into a big back bend. We're just lifting the heart. Beautiful. Slowly raise up. Take your hands to your hips and just pivot on your heels to face the side of your mat now. Plie your toes out and come into a gentle squat. So just a gentle squat. I'm rearranging my feet, moving them so the heels can stack right underneath the knees and the knees and the toes go in the same direction. Bringing your arms out to the sides, bend at your elbows and find goddess pose. So that fire that we built, with those chairs. I'm feeling it right away here in Goddess. So I'm gonna do a little bit of movement. This feels good for me. All right, let's move the arms as well. Slowly closing them, kind of like a pec deck, and then open them up. Shining the heart up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, last one. Inhale, open up. Good, take your hands to your hips, straighten the legs. We're gonna do our warrior on the opposite side. So straight to the back of your mat now, pivot on your heels. We're facing the back of the mat for our warrior one legs. So remember, hips facing the front. Inhale, bring those arms up overhead. And exhale, settle into the front knee. Hug your legs towards one another. Keep that engagement of your core active and strong. Mm, that's that mummy center strong we want. Where's your breath at? Do you tend to hold your breath through a challenge physically? You won't want to do that during a contraction, during a rush or a wave when you're in birth. You want to breathe into it. You want to nourish your muscles with your oxygen. Okay, last two cycles. Hands to your lower back. Open your heart. And just imagine you're widening your collarbones. <sighs> Gently pressing into your lower pelvis there, to your lower back. <sighs> Breathe. <sighs> Good. And coming back up through center, hands to your hips. Let's pivot on the heels once again. And all the way forward. And then hop that back foot up to meet the front just gently and take your time. So if you wanna step off your mat for our sumo squats and do it on the floor where you can kind of get a little bit of sticky, a little bit of traction, no problem. Um, just make sure that you're not half on your mat, half off your mat when you're doing this because I don't want you to feel like you're gonna fall. All right, so when you're ready, you can join in with me. Uh, sumo squats do take a great degree of balance, so find your drishti on the floor, a soft focal point like seven feet in front of you. Um, I want you to move slowly and really strengthen the core by stepping down 
silently. If you clomp down, you're not activating your core at all. And so we're trying to build this muscle memory down here in the transversus area. So for postpartum, it's not that long of a recovery. Okay. So when you're ready, putting the weight into one foot, bring the opposite knee up as high as you can into the armpit and then step down as silently as you can into a deep squat or whatever version of a squat you want. Opposite side. Whoo, I need to hold my drishti or I will fall too. So keep going, just alternating sides. We're gonna feel that fire building up in the foundation. That's okay, we're okay with that. See that as a positive, not a negative. So again, any position where belly is drawn towards the floor. So leaning over a bed, a counter, um, into an all fours position really, really helpful to open up space in the pelvis. And it just makes it easier for baby and makes it easier on your body as well to get baby in that optimal position for birth. So avoid the Hollywood position if you can, that Hollywood movie on your back, knees up at your armpits, that creates less space for baby as your pelvis is in a smaller, it has a smaller space, smaller cavity when you're on your back. And MRI scans show this. Okay, one more to either side, Whew, going slow. This isn't a race. Pause if you need to pause. Good. And then coming back up through center. Okay, take a stroll to the back of your mat. And with your hands at prayer, do a genie squat to get down, reaching for the floor, coming forward and forward and forward. From here, I want you to sweep your feet around and come to sit on your bum. Okay, so on your bum, make your way there slowly. We're going to try to find the staff pose, so really activate the feet. And staff pose is very challenging. I'm trying to create 90 degree here at the hips. And if you're finding that, hmm, I just can't get that nice tall spine, my back is rounding, that's where you pull in your prop. So giving your bum just a little bit of height, roll the pelvis forward, can help encourage this tall seat. You don't wanna feel strained here by sitting. What we do want is to activate the core and it's the core that gives us this tall seat. So lifting up tall, bring the energy up as well with your arms overhead. This is an option, take it or leave it. My cues are suggestions. Now, can you put a big breath into your belly, into the area here by your belly button? That shouldn't be contracted, just the core, the transversus is active to give you this length in your seat. One more cycle. Beautiful, bringing your arms down. I'll show you from the front. You can move the prop out of the way now and take your feet wide and just do a big windshield wiper action. Feels good, okay? Finding staff pose once again. I like to remove the flesh out of the way of the sit bones too. That does help me to sit up nice and tall. And then what we're gonna do is come into this very juicy fire log legs position. It's very intense on the hips. So if you're finding that it doesn't feel good for you, I'm gonna give you a second option, okay? So bend into the left knee, bring it in, flex that foot, really keep it flexed and charged. And then bend into the right knee, bring it over top. So you're stacking the right ankle over top of the left knee. And then you're stacking the right knee over top of the left ankle, the bottom. And then from here, it's simply just rolling your pelvis forward and finding that big stretch. You can keep rolling if this feels good, or you can find stillness, centering, concentration, softening those areas that cling to stress. It's really juicy. And if you're like, mm -mm, this just isn't for me, no problem. Extend that left leg long, keep that right foot nice and flexed, and then just place it on top of the thigh. Let your knee be heavy. And here you'll find a nice juicy stretch. You can tent your fingers behind you. 
So take which option feels good for you right now. And this week, it might just be a simple seated figure four like I just showed you. It's not a comparison to what you did before, what you could do before to anybody else. It's simply about noticing where you're at right here in this moment. One more breath cycle. Mm, lovely. And then slowly release. Come into that big windshield wiper again. Yeah, move slow. Encourage those muscles to wake up that might have fallen asleep there during the posture. Be compassionate with yourself. Okay, opposite side. So let's bend into the left leg. Uh, sorry, bend into the right leg first, bring that on the bottom. Left leg on top this time. And bring the ankle over the knee and the knee over the ankle. So just do the opposite. Juicy, juicy. And check in if it's just too intense, extend that right leg long. And keep the foot on top of the thigh, keep it nice and flexed. Come into the seated figure four. Can intensify it slightly by leaning forward if you want to. What do you need right now? Find those micro movements, those movements of intuition. You closing your eyes and just knowing what you need right now in this moment. This is all prep for your birth. Tapping into that intuitive self, you know what you need for you and baby during your birth. Two more cycles of breath. Mm, wonderful. All right, slowly we're gonna release and extend those legs long and let's give them a little beat out, a little wake up into the bum, into the hips, inner thighs, all the way down through the calves. Awesome. Okay, I want you to find a comfortable seat for you, whatever that looks like. So bringing the feet in feels good for me. You can bring your props in or just simply move yourself to a seat or a couch around you. Bring hands to baby. Breathe into the space. Into the space of your belly. Feel your belly expand, ebb and flow with each cycle of breath. So movement is key during your birth. Try to keep moving in an intuitive way, in a way that feels good and beautiful in your body. Think about dancing your baby out. So swaying, moving, maybe you have music on. And this helps encourage baby into that optimal position, ready for birth, deep down in your pelvis. Thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.